Hey guys, welcome to Bomb Beat TV. Guys, we're checking out one of your commendations. We're going to be church youth leader Asep Islam Ashraf Skaneda. Guys, I can't pronounce this name. Please don't take it against me, but I can't. I'm not good at names, bro. But let's go straight into this. It was at the airport where my mom held me in a close, embracing hug, and she prayed a prayer over me, which I will never forget. She prayed a prayer to a new God, Allah, whom I did not know back then. She prayed to this Allah to send a very big angel with me, to guide and to protect me upon my journey. Ashraf Schneider was born and raised in a Christian family. Since childhood, he was taught a lot about the stories of the prophets. Plus, his father was a pastor. So since childhood, it has been embedded in him to follow in his father's footsteps and become an influential person in the church. I was born and raised in a Christian family. My father was the pastor of a church. My mother, a beautiful singer within the choir. From a very young age, I've been nurtured by the names of the prophets, from Abraham and his sons to Noah upon his ship, Moses with his remarkable courage to guide his people to safety. It was from this very young age that I was met with a burning desire to follow in my father's footsteps, to become a religious leader. And so, I dedicated myself to this cause, and I soon acquired a platform upon which I could share my passion for God. As an adult around the age of 20, Schneider became an influential person in the church where he lived. He became the youth leader of the church. His independence emerged, and he tried to delve into Christianity as much as he could. But at the same time, Many questions arose in his mind. He asked the church leaders there at the time, but they could not answer his questions. And as my independence grew, religious freedom took hold, I started asking questions to my religious leaders which were often left unanswered. It was during this time that my mother also started reading more regarding Islam, and she eventually embraced Islam. What happened upon her journey is that she wanted to write an article for a local magazine regarding Hajj. And so she approached a Muslim man to write this article for her. So she took it upon herself to start composing this article. And as she studied more regarding Islam, she fell in love with this beautiful religion. When his mother converted to Islam, he was very disappointed with her decision, but he still loved her. As a church missionary, of course he opposed his mother wanting to write an article on Hajj. They often argued about religion, but he could not stop his mother from making up her mind. He looked for other ways, and when he gathered with the church youth group at his home, he always turned up the volume of the music in his house in the hope that his mother would convert back to Christianity. But I still remember during this time that whenever we would have youth group and we would do praise and worship in our house, I would turn up the music just a little bit, lo a little bit louder to try and call it back to Christianity. He did many things to bring his mom back to Christianity, but still failed. He felt unworthy to be a church youth leader because he had a Muslim mother. Because of this feeling of failure, his faith in the church began to wane and he decided to look for another job. He flew to Australia to become a photographer and marketing person on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Before leaving for Australia, at the airport, his mother hugged him while praying for Allah to send angels to protect him on his journey. It was at the airport where my mom held me in a close, embracing hug, and she prayed a prayer over me which I will never forget. She prayed a prayer to a new God, Allah, whom I did not know back then. She prayed to this Allah to send a very big angel with me, to guide and to protect me upon my journey. Besides praying to Allah, unbeknownst to him, his mother put an al Quran in his suitcase. Arriving in Australia, he opened his suitcase and saw a current that was already there. He also saw a message left by his mother in the suitcase. And so, I left for my flight and I landed in Australia and I got onto my ship and I opened up my bag and I realized that my mommy had left me with more than just a prayer. She left me with a copy of the Holy Quran. And it's on the very first page of this book that she wrote a little note and she said that, if ever I want to debate against Muslims one day, I need to understand what they believe. I need to know where they come from. What is their history? And so that makes sense to me. And with the love that I have for my mom within my heart, I dedicated myself to reading at least one page every evening. One page soon then turned into two, two into three, and I found myself completing the Quran from cover to cover. 
After reading the Quran until the end, he felt torn apart, his soul and body seemed to get a miracle. He was very lucky because his mother put the Quran in his suitcase. Now he got the answers to all the questions that had been in his mind. His new life journey had begun. Now this is where my journey began. And what I had found within the beautiful Quran is that all these questions that I had throughout my life were answered. What is our purpose in life? Why is there evil within this world? Does God truly exist objectively, rationally? After all his doubts were answered, he felt satisfied. And now his mind and heart were determined to accept the truth that he had been doubting. Finally, he decided to make the ahadat. It was as if I've been reading a new revelation. As all these truths came to me and inspired within me the ability to wholeheartedly make my kalima and say that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah that there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Muhammad peace be upon him is his messenger. That's all for today's video. Hopefully it will inspire those of you who... Well, guys, his story is such an amazing. Because if you like, understand it logically, he actually came from Christian home. But he never said anything about his father actually accepting his mom turning to a Muslim. But I really think I have Muslim friends, so we could, like, have a different, and another friend of mine actually invited me to a seminar that Ruth the Mecca is going to be attending. I was thinking of going there, but we're still considering it. We have exams, but we're still considering going, but I have actually moved to make a lot of my channel, and it would be nice for me to see him live. I think I'll come live on my channel that day, but it depends if I go. Well, this video is actually beautiful based on the fact that he actually thought his answer, his questions were answered. I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't gotten answers to my question. Most of my questions haven't been answered yet, but guys, we'll keep on pushing and see where it leads us to because I keep on answering this question. There's no proof that Jesus didn't die. There's no proof that he died. So, see, I find the proof that he didn't. I think I'll stick with Christianity. But guys, I'll see you next time, guys. Best.